Hello and welcome to All Work and Play, Childhood in the M&S Archive Collection. I'm Catherine and I'm part of the team at the M&S Archive in Leeds. Today we're going to look at childhood at M&S, from our humble beginnings as a penny bazaar in the 1880s right up to the present. It's a fascinating story and I'll be sharing items from the collection. If you're watching the premiere of this talk, I'm here to answer any questions in the chat on the right hand side. Otherwise, just email us at company.archive at mandes.com with any queries. The earliest toys in our collection date from the very early 1900s. This photograph of our Bedford Penny Bazaar market stall in 1909 reflects the simple haberdashery products that we sold. But if you were a child lucky enough to get pocket money, we sold simple toys to tempt you. Brightly painted wooden yo-yos and our collection also includes items such as peg dolls. We've always been very good at making our window displays very tempting for children with pocket money to spend or to parents and grandparents looking for gift ideas as these 1930s window display images show. But let's take a look in more detail at the toys themselves. Our first surviving example of advertising for children's toys is from Christmas 1912. This advert appeared in our grand annual, which featured a range of articles and short stories, along with adverts for our own and for other brands products. The image depicts a wide range of toys, rackets, teddy bears, card games, musical instruments, puppets, all sold for one penny. This photograph from our Edgware Road London store in 1920 shows some toys that would have delighted any child, from prams to rocking horses, train sets and dolls, but I think my favourite has to be the Ride On Elephant. Our giant packet of games promised amusement for everybody. How to tell a person's age, simple tricks for fireside conjurers, conundrums and puzzles. The Marspen box of six puzzles includes metal puzzle games which are very similar to items still available today. And card games such as Cheery Families were long-term popular classics. Mars Pen was one of our earliest own brands, formed from the names of our founding partners, Mr. Marks and Mr. Spencer, and it was used on an exclusive series of children's books in the 1910s and 1920s. The range featured painting and colouring books, as well as childhood classics. The recitations for the young featured short pieces for recitals at school or church groups. The Mars Pen series includes familiar fairy tales with beautiful full colour illustrations, which must have looked so attractive on the counters of our penny bazaars. But our children's books spark memories for every generation. For example, these titles may ring a bell for those who grew up in the 1980s. Spot any favourites? Many of the vintage toys in our collection are timeless classics, including jigsaws and soft toys. On the left, we have the gigantic jigsaw from the 1930s, and on the right, we have Spencer Bear. We first introduced Spencer Bear in the early 1930s and had a tradition of producing a new version every year as part of our Christmas toy and gift range. The idea was revived in 2009 as part of Marks and Spencer's 125th anniversary celebrations, although that year he appeared as Henry Bear rather than Spencer. This is our earliest surviving bear in the archive collection, dating from the 1930s. Dolls have also long been a popular childhood toy and we're aware of several versions sold in our stores over the years. In many cases, special clothes were knitted or sewn at home to supplement those that came with the dolls originally. On the left here, we have a doll from 1935 in the centre, we have our popular Peach Blossom doll from 1957 
and on the right we have a doll which was purchased in our stores in round about 1959. By the 1930s we were advertising a widening range of Christmas gifts, chemistry sets, electrical sets and the actor's outfit which included grease paints, hair and moustaches. Um, they also included table tennis sets. Here's a close-up of the packaging for one of those popular games. This table tennis set comprised an adjustable net to use on any table, bats and balls, although the packaging imagery suggests that the set was largely aimed at adult customers and wearing formal attire too. Playing shop has been popular with children through the decades and this splendid bright red toy till was donated to the archive in its original box by the original owner who remembers the excitement of receiving this as a Christmas present in round about 1950. In the 1950s our advertising team encouraged customers to think of the toys that their child would be dreaming of. We have one of the toy kittens in our collection and you can see that we were also offering a growing range of licensed brand name toys in the 1950s you can probably spot Disney's Donald Duck, as well as Enid Blyton's Noddy. The box table tennis set to the right of Noddy in the picture um, is one of the items that we have in our collection. While this Bambi puppet from 1957 is one of our earliest surviving examples of Disney branded merchandise sold in M&S stores. Something else that's been popular for children over several decades is dressing up. Whereas home improvised costumes have always been popular, we first introduced dressing up outfits in 1954. In terms of gender roles, they were definitely of their time. We sold nurses outfits for girls and cowboy outfits for boys. The market for dressing up costumes has grown, grown dramatically in recent years with season specific costumes for Halloween and Christmas, including for even our youngest customers now firmly established within our clothing ranges. The 1920s saw the introduction of children's wear first mentioned in our weekly bulletin for staff in 1927. Over the next few years, the children's wear range expanded to include everything from underwear and coats to smart separates and children's frocks. Children's wear was often promoted as part of our store window displays to showcase the quality, style and range of the children's wear available. In store, children's wear was displayed by type. For example, all of the girls' dresses were arranged together on the shop floor. We opened lots of new superstores throughout the 1930s, accompanied by national and local newspaper advertising campaigns featuring the slogan, The Family Store. It wasn't just the ready-made clothing that proved popular in the 1930s. Our knitting needles came with free knitting patterns, including designs for children's knitwear, such as this child's sun suit, and cardigan. The set was knitted by a volunteer a few years ago and is modelled here by the child of one of the archive team. Apparently he couldn't wait to take it off because the wool was so itchy against his skin. That's not the only uncomfortable M&S clothing item people might remember from their childhood. Some visitors to the archive speak about their memories of wearing a liberty bodice a fleecy vest designed to keep children very warm through the winter, but apparently it could be very uncomfortable to wear. I'm, I would love to track one down to be able to add to the archive collection. This mock-up for a window display in the 1930s features St Margaret hosiery. St Margaret was the brand name for Cora of Leicester, who supplied our underwear and hosiery. Their brand name was the inspiration for our own chairman, Simon Marks, when, in 1928, he introduced the St. Michael brand, named in honour of his father and company founder, Michael Marks. A story we sometimes hear is that our boys' clothing used to be called St. Michael, 
while girls' clothing used to be called St. Margaret. But in fact, St. Margaret was the brand name that appeared across all of the products supplied by Cora. And then all of our products were own brand St. Michael by the late 1950s. And the St. Michael brand continued to be used exclusively by M&S until 2000. Children's clothing was rationed during the Second World War. Children's clothes had lower coupon values than men's and women's in recognition of the fact that their children would need new clothes more often as they grew. From 1942, all children were allocated an extra 10 coupons, with additional coupons being issued for older children or those classed as outsize. Coupons were also needed for school uniforms, which could be a particular problem as many schools did not relax their rules on uniform during wartime. Clothing exchanges were set up by the Women's Voluntary Service, the WVS, to help meet the needs of women struggling to clothe their families. Women could take the clothes that their children had outgrown and were given a number of points for the clothes handed in. These could then be spent on other clothes at the exchange. Mothers were also encouraged to buy children's clothing in bigger sizes so that it could initially be taken in and then let out gradually as the child grew. This 1950s image is our earliest colour children's wear image. The images on the right showcase our coats in the 1950s. In this period, our best selling clothing items were cowboy outfits, playwear, girls cotton smocked dresses and gabardine raincoats. Fisherman's knitwear was popular for the whole family and in the late 1950s, jersey wear became very popular for children. These in-store displays in the late 1950s showcased practical and gay juvenile fashions and demonstrate the performance that we incorporated in the children's clothing with crease resistant fabrics and colour fast technology. In 1954, we launched Playwear, clothing designed to be durable and adjustable for growing children and their activities. And we marketed the clothes to highlight just how suitable they were for lots of active playtime. The durability and washability of clothing became a big selling point, including features such as extra deep hems that could be let down as children grew to extend the life of the product. It's fair to say that right up until the end of the 1950s, our younger customers tended to wear exactly the same styles as their parents and grandparents. Children's wear tended to be quite formal. And in 1957, this feature on twin sets and tailored skirts highlighted that girls could dress just like mum. That began to change in the 1960s, especially for teenagers with the emergence of new youth culture. As this 1960s children's wear special shows, our ranges increasingly reflected wider fashion trends. As women's henlines inched up in the mini dresses of the 1960s, so did our children's wear. Best sellers in children's wear in the 1960s ranged from cotton poplin two pieces for babies to girls dresses in contrasting crimpoline. This leaflet showcases our clothing ranges for children of all ages, from sleepwear to coats to trendy knitwear. And speaking of trends in knitwear, we think that we can trace the emergence of the Christmas jumper right back to the mid 1960s with some of the styles shown here. A more fundamental development in the 1960s was the introduction of sizing by age. M&S was the first major retailer to introduce this. Before this, parents needed to know the measurements of their child in inches to be able to shop from clothing ranges. So the introduction of sizing by age was a major departure and made shopping much easier for customers. In the late 1950s and 1960s, the majority of our marketing budget was spent on cinema adverts, 
at a time when most customers visited their local cinema regularly, but not everyone had TV sets at home. The adverts often focused on the latest wonder fabrics, man-made fabrics offering easy wash, easy care properties. These 1960s adverts showcasing children's wear are good examples of this. is a child. Marks and Spencer know. A child is a consumer of sweets, time, energy, and everyone's patience. A child comes in hundreds of shapes and sizes. St. Michael all on fits them all. A child never tires of finding out and being found out. To a child, clothes are a disguise. Underneath you'll find Batman. Lady Penelope, in a shop. A child growing up in, but never out of, St. Michael Orlon. Whatever a child is, there's a size and a style to fit it. Him, her, them, us, in St. Michael Orlon at Marks and Spencer. Aquiland get St. Michael, Aquiland buy St. Michael, Aquiland. Everything in Aquiland buy St. Michael, Aquiland get St. Michael, Aquiland. For Marks and Spencer. In the 1970s, we looked to the latest trends with bright, colourful clothes in modern fabrics. We emphasise their easy care properties. Wash them by hand or leave it to the machine. They'll come up good as new time and time again. Best sellers in the 1970s included terylene and cotton duffel coats for girls and polyurethane bomber jackets for boys. 
Throughout the 1980s, the sports trend was a major theme in clothing ranges, including joggers and shell suits, all in keeping with the growing fitness trend. Coordination was a key theme, with mix and match colours and fabrics specially selected so that tops and bottoms could team up together. More formal dresses for parties and special occasions remain popular. For older children, in the mid-1980s we launched a new look, with a fashion-conscious range of casual clothes. For older girls, the range included skinny leggings, straight skirts, polo neck jumpers and sweatshirts. Older boys wear was also updated for the fashion conscious teen, with key pieces such as styled knitwear, casual jackets and shirts. The 90s showed a trend towards a casual layered look with double denim and loose fitting shirts, and we've worked with lots of different celebrities and designers over the years on special collaborations for fashionable youngsters. In 2002, we worked with David Beckham to create the DB07 range, named after the number seven shirt he famously wore for Manchester United and England. As well as the continuing trend towards more casual clothing for children, the mini-me trend of matching parents and child outfits has grown increasingly popular in the last few years and shows no sign of changing anytime soon. 2016 saw the launch of Easy Dressing and M&S First. It's a range specifically designed for children living with disabilities such as hip dysplasia and autism, with clothing specially adapted with hidden labels, is easy to open fastenings, slits to aid the use of a feeding tube and the use of super soft materials making comfort the key priority. Originally launched as school wear only, by 2018, we had increased the range to cover a range of day wear. Lots of our hand-me-down items come with wonderful stories of Marks and Spencer becoming part of the family. This blue girl's Macintosh was originally purchased in about 1969 or 1970 for Brenda's eldest daughter. And when she grew too big for it, the coat was handed down to her youngest daughter. The coat was then given to a friend who had two daughters who both wore it before it was returned to Brenda. With lots of life still left in the coat, Brenda passed it on to a friend of her mother who had two small granddaughters who in turn wore the coat until they grew out of it. The coat was then worn by three cousins of the granddaughters. A few years later, the Macintosh was returned to Brenda before Brenda donated it to the archive in 2011. These girls' stripy dresses with smocking detail to the front were bought by Anna in the late 1950s or possibly just into the early 1960s. The dresses were worn by all five of her granddaughters. With the hems repeatedly let up and down as the children grew and the dresses were passed on to the next grandchild. So far we've looked at toys and books and clothing but many customers have very specific childhood memories of Marks and Spencer being dragged into store in the summer school holidays to be kitted out with school uniform for the new school year. We started selling school clothing in the 1920s, but not under our own Marks and Spencer St. Michael brand. In 1927, we sold school satchels, small attache cases, exercise books, cardigans, trousers, golf hose and ties which were particularly in demand as the new school term started. Many of the products that used to be part of school uniforms are no longer part of today's requirements. For example, gabardine raincoats, which were a popular feature from the 30s right through to the 1950s. The image on the left is from our back to school special in 1954 and on the right we have a marketing image from 1963. Our children's clothing, including the school uniforms, was well known for having extra generous hem allowances so that items could be lengthened as children grew taller. And we coined the phrase, the test is in the testing. 
linings and buttons, as well as the fabric of garments, were tested in our laboratories with abrasion, shrinkage and washing tests. From the 1990s, our adverts reflect a less formal approach to school wear, both in terms of the clothing itself, for example, the introduction of sweatshirt style tops, and in the advertising campaigns themselves. Easy care fabrics, non scuff leather shoes, pockets for mobile phones, non iron shirts, increased resistant fabrics, skirts with permanent pleats, garments with reinforced seams, and a high performance stain repellent finish called Stain Away, and even uniform made from recycled plastic bottles are all features of our school wear today. Lots of our customers have memories of favourite M&S foods from their childhood, whether it's a chocolate and coconut telebar from the 1960s or a Colin the Caterpillar cake from a special birthday party. Our food team have developed products that are specifically child friendly too. Our first convenience foods were introduced in the 1970s and over time the range has expanded to include child friendly products in eye catching packaging without artificial colours, flavourings or preservatives. We've also introduced packed lunch friendly products and free from foods for customers with specific food intolerances. Of course, confectionery has always been a special treat for children and we've been selling packets of boiled sweets since our earliest Penny Bazaar days. This food department memo from 1927 shows our best selling confectionery at the time, from medicinal bronchial tablets to slab toffee, butterscotch pieces, mixed fruit jubes and mintos. You'll see that we were selling branded products from famous confectionery brands such as Nestle, and also that all sorts have always been popular with customers. Our collection includes this original packaging for mini sorts from 1967. This packet of sweets was bought for a five-year-old son as a sweet treat. They were put on the top of a kitchen cupboard for safekeeping and found again 35 years later. And here are some classic M&S sweets from the 1960s through to the present. Is your favourite here? People often tell us that they remember the range of three line mints that we used to sell, while Percy Pig has attracted a loyal all age fan base since launching 30 years ago in 1992. And that brings us to the end of the talk today. I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at childhood at m &S. All of our past talks are available on our YouTube channel so if you'd like to dig a bit deeper into M&S history, that's a great place to start. Do get in touch if you have any questions and keep an eye out for more online events on our website.